Hi, I'm Ariana Cohen-Halberstam. I'm the Artistic Director of Boston Jewish Film, and I'm so pleased to have with us Maya Sarfati, the director of the film you just saw, Love It Was Not. Thank you, Maya, for being here. Thank you for having me. Thank you for showing my film. I'm very proud to be here. Thank you. We're really glad to show it. And I know that it's been talked about in many circles already and people are excited, we're excited to see it. Um, and there's a lot to talk about and there are many layers to the film. And I think saying layers is, is fitting for this film and, and we'll get to that. But um, I wanna start at the beginning. I know this is a story that you've known and that certainly comes across in the film. How did you learn Helena and Franz's story? Uh, well, I know the story since I was just uh, a little child. I believe I was only eight, maybe seven or eight, I believe, uh, when I first heard it. Uh, Miki, she's uh, the daughter of uh, uh, Rosa, the sister of Elena. Uh, she was my acting uh, teacher when I was just a little child. Uh, and she entrusted the story of the sister into my, uh, into my hands uh, out of the understanding that, that at some point I will be the voice to tell the story to the world. And I actually tried to do all kinds of things with the story. I tried to write it as a novel. I tried to write it as a fiction film. Hmm. And it always, it always felt um, artificial. My words felt so small in regard to this big and unbelievable story. Uh, and six years ago already, yes, six years ago, uh, when Mickey and I contacted Dagmar, she's the daughter of Franz Wunsch, uh, the SS officer, when we contacted her, her and we realized that she's very open uh, well, open is, I'm not sure that's the right phrase, uh, willing. but uh, willing, yeah, thank <laughs> you. That she's willing to cooperate with us and that she is curious uh, regarding the other side. Um, I believe that was the point in which I realized uh, I finally have the means to tell the full and the complete story. Uh, so I started working, actually back then I was a, a student in the MFA uh, in uh, uh, cinema um, uh, in the Tel Aviv University in mm -hmm. the cinema um, uh, department. Thank you. Uh, it's late there. It's good. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, and I, I started working on my uh, graduation project. It was a short film, 32 minutes short film called uh, The Most Beautiful Woman. Uh, that actually, I actually won, uh, we won the Student Academy Award amazing. and we've been to LA and it, it was amazing. It's a very different film uh, from the one uh, that you just watched. Uh, the short film uh, focuses on the, the second generation uh, I brought Dagmar uh, to Israel mm -hmm. uh, and we had a meeting between the, the daughter of the SS, Dagmar, and the children of the survivors. And it was a very, very dramatic meeting, uh, very meaningful. Um, I can show you some picture. Can, can I share screen? Sure, that, that would be great. Is there anywhere people can see the short film now? I'm sure people will be interested in seeing it. Uh, I can uh, send a link uh, if that's possible through the, uh, if you have newsletter or something. Uh, yeah, that would be wonderful. I, it's a, it, they're certainly in this film there, we, you touch on the second generation. And I think that um, it's not surprising that you had a whole film on it just because it comes across as an area of interest in this film. Yes. So this is the, most in beautiful the woman. Film, this is from the, uh, the, the climax of the film, the meeting itself. Mm. Uh, uh, this is Mickey and Dagmar uh, together. It was very interesting to, to see the, the different way uh, each side tell the story, remembers the story, 
mm. and choose to tell or not tell it to yeah. his children. Uh, and who is the man here? Uh, this is Paul. Uh, it's uh, Dagmar's uh, husband. Got it. Okay. Uh, and this is all of us in the end of the, um, the meeting. Here I am here. Oh, wow. Uh, here we can see Israel, uh, Israel, uh, Israel, uh, Billy. They are the, dot, the, the children of uh, Helena and Mickey. Recognize the nice them. Yeah. And this is from the Oscar. This oh. is me here, very colorful and short Beautiful. on the long dark. <laughs> Uh, yes, it was very, very exciting uh, to be there. And uh, when I came back, I realized uh, I must do a long version because uh, now I have, uh, I felt I, I finally can make the film about the past, uh, about what really ha happened back then. And we had the co-production, Israeli-Austrian co-production. Uh, and we started working on this film. I was going to ask you, and, and I, I guess we sort of jumped in midway, because I, I imagine that your impression of the story as an eight-year-old is very different. Um, of, did you see the film when you were younger as, as a romantic story? Did that shift at all? as you got older, as you started working on the film? Um, as a young child, I thought, well, this is so romantic. Uh, he fell in love with her. Uh, he saved her more than once. Uh, okay. I guess that in many ways, uh, that's the way uh, as a young, uh, as a young child, I. I could, um, I could get it. Uh, you know, nowadays I I'm not even sure we can really speak in terms of love when we speak about this kind of a relationship because, uh, you know, uh, can we speak about free will uh, when we're to we're talking about an SS officer and a Jewish prisoner in Auschwitz? Uh, can we even? Uh, so I'm not sure uh, if we can, if, if it's love or not love. Uh, Elena herself, she says, love it was not. Uh, she said know, a passing infatuation, I think, was the term she used at the end of the film. Yes, it's a, it's a very interesting anecdote, actually, because Elena says that the song that she sang in this, in this first moment they met uh, was Liebe war es nie. It was never love. That's the exact translation. She translated, love it was not, and I'm going with her. And Franz this is the song that carries us through the mm -hmm. film. Yeah. yeah. Franz Wunsch tells in his diary that the song that she sang at that moment uh, is a different song that is, a, uh, the translation of, the, of its words is, my heart is homesick for your love. Wow. So we have, it was never love. And we have, my heart is homesick for your love. Uh, I, to tell you, to be honest, I'm not sure that either of the song, songs is the one that was sang uh, at that moment. But I think that we can learn a lot uh, about uh, the way each of them felt about the past or the way each of them wanted to pass on the story and, Absolutely. and to remember it to other, for other people to remember it. Yeah. Right. Which, which I'm sure made the meeting between these two women very interesting. The daughters of this story, uh, very interesting. Um, having heard the story from their aunt and from their um, father. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think the main thing uh, was uh, the difference. Um, you know, Dagmar said things like, well, my father worked in the laundry room uh, in Auschwitz. And well, how to say the Jews didn't 
uh, get laundry service in uh, in Auschwitz. Uh, it wasn't part of the deal there. Uh, so the gap was very big and uh, Mickey actually really confronted her and uh, demanded her to to see the past as it was, Auschwitz as a death camp and her father as an SS officer taking part in it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I the, for me, the film was very much framed by the beginning of the film where we hear about the sexual violence happening to these women. It's not something that actually appears that often in films about the Holocaust. And it's such an important part of these women's experience and also um, for how we look at this story. Can you talk a little bit about why you chose to include that at that point in the film and, and how you thought of it as if you intentionally were framing the film with that? First of all, thank you very much for saying that uh, and for pointing uh, this moment in the film because I must say I um, fought for this uh, okay. section in the film because uh, when I showed, 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 yes, when I showed my uh, rough cut uh, mm -hmm. at the beginning of the editing process, uh, many of the viewers told me, well, all the beginning, well, we know it. All the process oh. of cutting their hair and et cetera, et cetera, we know it. It's, it's, it's like, uh, and I said, no, we don't know it because it's from a female pr perspective. And the female perspective is, first of all, very unique. And second of all, it's, it's very important for me to, to lay this um, unbalanced um, uh, positions of a victim and an SS officer in Auschwitz. This is the basic uh, platform. Uh, from it, I'm starting to tell the story about this love story. Uh, this is the gap. Um, so it was very important for me for, for, for these two reasons. Uh, to, it to really open. stays with the viewer, I, 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 my, my experience. Good, thank you. I'm very happy to hear that. Yeah. So that's really, so that's sort of the framework that you set up us up with. And I, I'm assuming that's a different framework than you grew up with, with this, this story. Um, and at some point came to, is that, is that fair to say? Um, I don't think that at some point that I came to understand it. it. I just, the story went with me all, all these years and I, it just grew, grew with me. Uh, mm. So uh, it's, it's not like at some point I just, I was like, no, it was, it's not what I thought it is. Yeah. Uh, along the years, uh, the complicity of the situation, uh, revealed itself to me a bit by bit uh, as I grew up and was able to to deal with it. Right. I mean, and the story remains complex in the film and we hear these different perspectives from the women who were in the camp uh, with Rosa and Helena. Um, from the beginning of sort of their, the way they felt about their relationship to the way they think about it now, it, it's incredible that you got these interviews. How did you connect to these women and was it hard to get them to share their stories with you and, and talk about them? Well, uh, one of uh, the biggest challenges I had starting work, working on this film was that my three, my three protagonists uh, were gone were mm. and they are, they are, the three of them were dead, Elena, Rosa and Franz. Uh, I had their interviews. Uh, Helena is from the uh, Shoah Foundation by, by Steven Spielberg. Uh, Rosa is a family archive material uh, shot by a, a professional uh, cameraman. And Franz Wunsch, obviously, it's a, a family archive uh, material. Uh, so for the most 2000, no. 2016 and most of 2017, I actually uh, spent in the Yad Vashem archive. This is the biggest biggest archive in Israel uh, uh, for for the Holocaust. 
and uh, I was looking uh, for testimonies of women survivors who were among the first transports to Auschwitz or worked in the Canada facilities. I watched dozens uh, of shocking testimonies mm -hmm. of Auschwitz, really, uh, hoping they would remember and mention mm -hmm. Helena, Rosa, and Franz. Wow, well, I used to come back home. Wow, I was devastated, really. It was terrible days. Uh, I had terrible nightmares uh, and I cried. Wow, I cried a lot back then. Yeah. Uh, but there were also moments of light in these days, at least from a script writer point of view, because uh, to my surprise, quite a few of the survivors devoted precious minutes of their personal testimony to this story. Wow. And those few minutes were kind of a window, you know? Uh, through it, I, I, could, I, I could look into the past. Yeah. The words helped me understand what is the real day-to-day -day meaning of the bombastic headline an affair between an SS officer and a Jewish prisoner in Auschwitz. They gave it color. Mm. They gave it smell and sound. They gave it life. You know, they, they helped me understand uh, what, what does it mean. Right. Uh, I was able to locate seven of the women and interview them myself. And the rest of the testimonies in the film are, are the product of the uh, Yad Vashem uh, and the Shoah Foundation uh, by Steven Spielberg archives. Um, I call these brave and beautiful women in the film, the chorus of the thousand women. Mm. For me, all of them together are the fourth protagonist of the film. There is Helena, Rosa, Franz, and the women's chorus. Uh, Absolutely. There's like, such a, th their testimony is so important and I just, it's incredible to think of you sitting there just hoping that you'll find something and that you were able to actually speak to these women and that they were able to bring such wis wisdom and, and, um, and openness to the film. Yes, yes. Uh, they, they actually, uh, as I see, they actually tells the story. Uh, like, like in the classical Greek tragedy, mm -hmm. uh, the chorus uh, is the one that unfolds the story. But there's a big difference because here the chorus does not speak in one voice. Okay. Uh, on the contrary, each and every one of them brings a different voice and a different gaze at Elena and the whole story. And I love, on a personal note, I can say that I love each and every one of these women. They are brave and honest and nasty <laughs> and empathetic and full of envy. Uh, they are uh, wonderfully human and very yeah. honest, and I adore them and respect them for that. Yeah. And I think that they really, the complexity is the question in the film. There are so many complex questions in the film, um, even asking what the nature of love is, what, what, what people's motivations are. Um, and then of course, the big question of should, should Helena have re returned to Austria to, to speak at Franz's trial. Um, did, you, did you go into the film or did you personally have any, any thoughts about that that changed in the making of the film? Um, and did you sort of plan to make that a, a crux in the movie? Well, I must say that, um, of course, uh, from Helena's perspective, this moment in life, choosing whether she should uh, go to Austria and give her testimony in the courtroom uh, to be part of his trial. Of course, it was a very, very dramatic moment for her <clears throat> with all the, the pressure in Israel, in Israel not to go and uh, the obligation she felt uh, to go and to tell the truth. Uh, but uh, having said that, uh, I think that actually her testimony had a very little impact mm -hmm. uh, on the, um, the outcome of the trial. 
because back then in in uh, in the 60s uh, more than six, 60 more than 60 ss officer that lived freely in austria uh, were brought the names of them brought to the knowledge of the austrian authorities only four of them brought to trial all of them were acquitted and france france's trial was the last trial that that austria held against uh, war criminals just for a reference germany still does till today mm. um, so i don't think that uh, on the bottom line whether she uh, would have or or if she would choose not to go, it would make any real difference. Uh, to her, it may have, it made a difference. Yeah, to her, of course, but yeah. uh, from the, the, the trial pers perspective. Yeah, I, no. the line of, of one of the women who had, who had been a witness, um, when she said, I felt like I myself was on trial for having been on the camp, that's really stuck with me. And, you really get a sense of what it felt like in that room from that one line, I think. Yeah. Um, bef there's so much to discuss, but I, I don't want to talk about anything bef more before getting to the format of the film because um, it's so artistically and beautifully put together and you use these um, cutouts, which I guess you're sort of given, per granted permission to do um, by Franz cutting out Helena's head and putting her in different places. But when did that come to you as, as an idea and, and how did you make it work? Um, it's so beautifully done. Well, uh, that, that is actually, there were two big challenges for me as a, as, a, as a director, as a filmmaker making this film. The one, the first one I already talked about is the, uh, the, the fact that I didn't have any live interviewees um, and the second one was the lack of footage, because uh, when the Americans and the Russians uh, came uh, to Auschwitz, the Germans burned all the, document the, the documents, footage and uh, everything, everything, everything. And the estimation is that only 5% uh, of the material uh, survived. Uh, and this 5%, we know very well. Uh, it's black and white, old pictures. Uh, that is, it's sad and hard to say, but they are worn out. Mm -hmm. We know them very well. Uh, and well, cinema is a visual art. So I had to, to understand how am I going to tell the story? And we had all kinds of uh, and ideas and uh, it actually came to me like, like in the films, like in the movies. Uh, in the middle of the night, I woke up and I told Neil, is my husband and also the producer of the film, I have it, I know it. <laughs> and, and yes, as you said, I, uh, Franz made this uh, photo montage uh, of her, from this one picture of Helena he had uh, uh, placing her head on different clothing and different backgrounds in order um, I believe uh, to imagine the life they could have had together uh, after the war mm -hmm. uh, and I borrowed the, the technique and developed it uh, I worked with two wonderful artists, uh, Shlomit Gofer and Ayelet Albenda. Uh, we worked with real archival footages, uh, mm. footage. Um, uh, oh, wow. On the, in the first stage, Ayelet uh, made uh, 2D digital uh, uh, montages. Uh, and in the second uh, stage, uh, Ayala, uh, Shlomit, which you see her hand here, <laughs> uh, broke it to layers oh, and wow. pla placed it on a maquette, which is a small model of model of, of a stage. Uh, 
And then we, were, we went into the studio and shot it with a cinema a, a camera and equipment. Uh, we used water and fire at the beginning. When I started, I thought I, I, would, I would have something like 10 minutes of the film in this mm -hmm. technique. Uh, but we developed it and worked and it got bigger and bigger and bigger and eventually it's half of the film. Uh, it was very important for me uh, that the audience uh, will be able to distinguish each and every moment in the, in the film while they're watching the film uh, between uh, real archival footage, uh, documents, uh, which uh, I do have in the film, like pic pic real pictures from Auschwitz and of Auschwitz. Um, so they will be able to distinguish between uh, real archival uh, documents and imaginary illustrations of mine. Because right. even though I, I worked with uh, uh, precise documenting and worked with the testimonies of uh, the protagonists and the other way, women, it's still imaginary. I, 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 this is the way I imagine the, the scenes. Uh, so uh, this is why we chose this rough style of the, of the maquettes, the, the, the cutting that you see. Mm -hmm. uh, you can feel the paper. You can see the, 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 the cuts, the, the handmade style. Uh, it was very important for me. Uh, it's so creative and I think it really does point to this theme of the film of, you know, how do we remember, how do we remember the things that happened? How do they remember the story that happened to them? What actually happened may be irrelevant. It's something of, there's some kernel of truth. There's the picture of her face and then there's the cuts around it. And I think it really encapsulates so much of the film. So kudos to you and your team for doing it though. I, I loved it. Yeah. Thank you. I had one more question I'd forgotten to ask you that I wanted to when we were talking about um, the song, because mm. the recording is so haunting and beautiful. And um, was that, is that a popular recording? Where did you, how did you get that? Re record? It's so bare, stripped down and tell, well, tell me a little bit about that. Ayala Telbenda, uh, the, the artist I, walk, uh, I worked with, uh, she's a very, very good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. uh, she learned for nine years in Berlin uh, art uh, in, in the art school. And when I uh, uh, sat in the editing room with my wonderful uh, editor, Sharonia Ish, uh, we, needed, we needed a placeholder uh, to edit uh, the scene with. So I called her and I asked her, can you just uh, uh, sing, uh, record yourself on the phone? for me just just so I can work with and after that I will rec record a professional singer uh, and it was so beautiful uh, and I fell in love with it and everybody else as well uh, so I took Ayala to the to the studio to have to to have a professional uh, recording mm. of her singing that song and we did that and when I came back to the editing room Sharon and I uh, looked at each other and we said, but the original one is better. <laughs> so the one that I'm using in the film is the one she recorded in, on her cellular in, at night when a little girl is sleeping in the next room. So she's very, very quiet and very intimate. And this is a recording I'm using in the Incredible. film. <laughs> It's intimate, but also distant because it's through the phone. So there's something that works really nicely with the film here. It, it's beautiful. I, I assumed I would be able to find the recording on YouTube, but I guess, <laughs> I guess not. No, um, no. In the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So the film I know won at Dhaka Aviv last year. Um, and I believe it, it's, tell, tell us what's happening next with the movie and where, where else people will be able to tell their friends to see it. Uh, well, we actually, uh, the fact that we won, uh, won uh, Doc Aviv, uh, which was a very uh, surprising and uh, joyable evening, uh, 
that was held, of course, on the Zoom. Uh, so we won the prize uh, from our living room with our three years old baby girl uh, sitting next to us. Um, it was quite, quite surreal. Um, but uh, the, the prize qualifies us uh, to run uh, to the big Oscar. Uh, oh, wow. So we're doing that uh, this year. Hopefully uh, we'll get there. Uh, to the short list at least. Um, uh, our uh, international premiere was in the ITFA Film Festival in, in the Netherlands, uh, which is a, a, a very important, if not the most important uh, documentary film festival in the world. Uh, also in the Zoom, of course, mm -hmm. it, it's a Zoom year. Uh, <laughs> it has been, yes. Uh, hopefully, we'll be we'll have a cinema release in the United States uh, in the in the autumn, uh, around September or October. Hopefully, yeah, uh, we'll hope to be back in cinema. Well, thank thank you so much. Um, it's really been a pleasure talking to you, and I'm so thrilled to be bringing this film to Boston to share with our audience. And thank you, thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for the great con conversation. Uh, yeah. I, I hope it will be meaningful for the audience to to listen to us. Yeah, and hopefully we'll see you at the Oscars. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.